morning. It's Tuesday, April 28th. Yesterday morning, the New York State Board of Elections moved to cancel June's presidential primary. It was a streamed event, like Zoom. The board voted to enact a provision in this year's New York State budget, allowing the presidential primary to be canceled if the race were to become non-competitive. So it's non-competitive because Bernie Sanders suspended his campaign. And while the Sanders campaign still does have political points to game, capturing delegates would strengthen his bargaining position entering the Democratic Convention. But there's more at stake. Sanders is no longer, at least in an official capacity, campaigning in the state. But the other primaries that are going on for state offices and stuff like that is still going to take place. So the Board of Elections will still be open. You know, when you look back at Bernie's campaign, it wasn't so much a campaign as a movement. He never exceeded more than 30% of the Democratic primary vote. And that doomed the campaign. But I call it a movement because... He was looking for a left of left wing group of people that would carry on his vision for the country, health care for all, higher wages, doing away with income inequality. Now, there are many people who are, I will call them center leftists. They're not far, far left. They're center leftists. And they believe in the American way. They believe that you work hard and you get ahead. They believe that you take advantage of education. And uh, there's a lot of things they believe in, but they, 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 you know, they, Bernie was too far left for them. That's the bottom line. But having said that, I don't think a lot of these people would have abandoned Bernie uh, and vote for Trump. That's unquestionable. That's not even a question in my mind. There's nobody that remotely like Bernie that would ever vote for Trump. But the basis of this thing is beyond the Democratic Party, there are independents out there. 20, 25% of the voters are independents. And there's no evidence that there's a large percentage of them that would be voting for the left. Maybe a little center left, but not far left. And a lot of Americans uh, support policies like Medicare for All and the Green New Deal. But then again, some of those people support that policy, but they would prefer to vote for Biden. And people under 45 lean much further left than the older voters. So, you know, the older voters are going to vote Democratic but they're not going to vote left Democratic. So that was another thing that was uh, against Bernie. Here's another thing that hurt Bernie. While Democrats have been moving farther and farther left on economics for the last 20 years, but the white working class has shifted farther and farther to the right. Why is that? I'm going to try and answer that question. If you look at things over the last couple of years, Notice that unions have disappeared. In addition to that, this white working class are angry. They have been simmering for decades due to globalization, wage stagnation, and the myth of meritocracy. So they're not appreciated anymore. And you can see that in the fact that China took a lot of their jobs. And then in Mexico, when we made the NAFTA treaty with Mexico, we sent a lot of their jobs away. So, of course, they're angry. And they're angry because a lot of those jobs were sent away while a Democrat was president. Since 1971, the percentage of middle class households has fallen by 10%. Half of those households joined the upper class and half of them joined the lower class. So it's little wonder that many of them face a future that's uncertain, but they plug along, and then there are those that have hope. 
and many of them fear becoming the white minority. So, if we put all of that together, we might understand why there is a white working class problem for the Democrats. On the other hand, we might say it isn't even a white working class problem. It's a working class problem. So the bottom line is, if the Democrats don't wake up and realize the problems they have and figure out how to tell Biden to address these problems, it's going to be a very difficult presidential campaign for them. Um, I can't say, I have nothing else to say right now. So have a nice day and I'll see you in the morning. Stay safe.